Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics in this video. I'd like to move on from the problems that Labour has now and move on to what the party needs in order to get itself back into the position where it can win an election. Now, this will be evidence based, not based on some random absurd statements based on what sits comfortably with people. Now, first, if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the first thing we need to do is look at the actual reasons that people gave for not voting Labour. Do note that if you're a Corbyn supporter, you're not going to like this, but this is what people have said. It's what they've said in polls. It's what they've said in the exit polls. It's what we know. Um, first and foremost was, of course, Jeremy Corbyn. The single biggest reason why people who voted wouldn't vote Labour, even though they would ordinarily, why people who wouldn't vote for anyone because they couldn't bring themselves to the vote for the Conservatives, but they also wouldn't vote Labour, stayed away when they'd normally vote. Jeremy Corbyn. Not his policies as such, just him. They didn't trust him. Now, there's no point in arguing about whether or not voters' perceptions of him were fair or not. In fact, they never really are fair for any Labour leader. Corbyn supporters make much of the media attacks on him, but the media behave like that with all Labour leaders. Even Tony Blair was vilified by the press. Didn't stop him winning general elections. But it doesn't matter whether people's views of Corbyn were fair or not. They were the perceptions. And he was not able to counter those views. That is a fact. To deny reality doesn't stop it being real. And on that point, I'd like to make people aware that there is a campaign to get more moderate people to join the Labour Party. Given that the Labour leadership contest is going to drag on a bit now, because Corbyn's not going anywhere till spring, joining now means that you'll be eligible to vote for the next leader. The minimum contribution is not very much at all. It's a few quid a month. And you'd be helping to broaden the appeal of the Labour Party, as well as making rejoining the EU much more likely sooner rather than later. I mean, in terms of practical things that Remainers can do, this is it. We only need about 100,000 moderate people to join the Labour Party and we can make sure that we get a sensible leader. In addition, if we get a sensible leader, then those who were never really Labour supporters in the first place, just Corbyn supporters, will leave the party and then the job of electing sensible people to the National Executive Com Committee will be much easier and we can transform Labour much more quickly. And before people go off on one, I know there are lots of real Labour supporters, you know, lifelong Labour supporters that also support Corbyn and maybe still do. Don't panic, not having a pop at you, just the ones who came in and then will bugger off again once Corbyn has gone. So the first thing that is needed is a leader that is free of two things. First one is baggage. Leaders with baggage go very badly. We have seen this. Jeremy Corbyn came with an awful lot of baggage that was easy meat for the right wing media. A Marxist holding talk with terrorists going to their funerals, being opposed to our nuclear capability. All of these things are essentially good parts of his character, really, as far as I'm concerned, but plays poorly to the public. Now, not only do most people not know what a Marxist is, but being a Marxist doesn't mean that he turns the country into a Marxist state, even if you did know what it means, I thought, oh, no, thank you. Talking with terrorists is also something that both Conservative and Labour ministers did without being attacked for. It's how the Northern Ireland peace process happened and how peace processes happen around the world by talking. Finally, nobody really wants us to use nuclear weapons, but many people still believe the fact that it's a deterrent. So although none of those aspects of his character were bad in my view, they were still high grade voter repellent. He would have stood a chance if he could have at least opened up a conversation with the public about them, but he never did. He has this take me or leave me attitude. Now that's fine for an ordinary individual person, but not for a leader of a political party because what happens is that people leave you. Of course they do, because they only have your political opponent's viewpoint. You are not offering up your own. He completely refused to engage in these debates. And the second thing the new leader needs is to have distance from Jeremy Corbyn. This is important because the Conservatives use Jeremy Corbyn as a very effective bogeyman. They will transfer all of that onto anyone who was at all close to him. You think, for example, Sir Keir Starmer might make a good leader. He may well be free of baggage. He may well have the skills. 
But given that the Tory press haven't come up with any dirt on him, I'm going to say that he's almost certainly clear of baggage. But that's fine. No problem, says the Tory graph. Just claim that Starmer is a puppet leader and that Corbyn is still the real power in the party, that he hasn't actually gone away. He's the puppet master behind the throne. Who's going to prove them wrong? Now that can't possibly stick if the next leader is an MP that wasn't that close to him. They don't have to have been aggressively opposed to him, just not close. Then there are the policies. Now, all of the policies were, in my view, good. And not just in my view, but in the view of many economists as well. But the problem was that there were too many. Now, I saw some feedback from northern constituencies that went Tory last week. Down-to-earth people that wouldn't have dreamed of voting Conservative until now. Many of them were saying that they just couldn't believe that Corbyn could do everything he was promising to do without paying more. No such thing as a free dinner. Now, I could try and argue that they are already paying quite a lot and that a lot of that money has been wasted by going into the pockets of millionaires, that the finances can be squared. But there's that old perception again. There is no point in arguing with perceptions. You know, people blaming the electorate. You're blaming millions of voters for not seeing Corbyn for this evangelical figure. You can't do that. You know, arguing with the voters is not how you win elections. So that perception is there, and it is there. It wasn't possible to deliver all of the policies of the manifesto anyway, and nobody cares about something that's going to come to fruition in 2030 because everyone will think, well, you'd have to win two parliaments uh, to get that. What they want to know is what's going to change next week if I vote for you now. Labour should have scaled down their plans, focused on a smaller programme that would find the most favour. And if they delivered it successfully, they'd have won a second term anyway and then could deliver the rest. Hell, <laughs> if they could deliver their manifesto in less than five years, what's to stop them putting more through before the next election anyway? But the key thing is focus on what matters most to people and make it believable. Make it believable. Make it so it doesn't seem too much. To ordinary working class people, they don't need a list as long as your arm of policies, no matter how good. They want to know how their lives will be made better in a way that they will believe. Promises on the NHS, transport and housing would have done the trick. Less is more. And the next leader should consider that. Finally, they need to make sure that they have a good political strategy team. I think one of Corbyn's main problems was that he insisted on using his own people, the people really close to him, his little clique, so to speak. But they had no successful experience of campaigning at all. They've, they've never run a successful campaign. Protests, yeah, they can organise a rally, they can organise a march, they can give him a megaphone and let him talk angry at a crowd of people or cheer him on. Great. It's not the same thing. The fear, I am sure is in using political strategists who are viewed as centrists is that their policies aren't compatible. But unless you're Boris Johnson, your campaign strategists aren't your policy advisors. Sure, they may make comments about which ones are good and bad from a marketing point of view, which you should listen to, but they won't be writing your manifesto. That's down to you. No sod reads the manifesto anyway. The next leader needs to use strategists with proven skills and experience and results. Use people who have won campaigns who know how to deliver the simple messages that actually work on their target audience. There was a terrible situation, I mean, when Corbyn started. People, you know, think about the campaigns he's, he's gone through as Labour leader. There's the Brexit referendum and now two general elections, as well as the EU elections and various local elections. And all too often when polls are done, too many people say, they don't understand Labour's policy on a particularly important thing. The, the message is not simple enough and it's not clear enough and it's not getting out there. Many Corbyn supporters will say that voters didn't really understand what either the Conservatives or Labour were really offering. If they had, they'd have voted Labour. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So the message was poor. The message needs to be made good and the situation will then rapidly improve. It goes without saying, Labour has to become the focal point for rejoining the EU. 
consider this. Over the past few years, neither Labour nor the Conservative leaders have been talking up the EU, and yet most people in this country are now Remainers. More people voted for parties promising another vote than opposing it. Imagine what support there would be in the country if one of the main parties was actually getting the discussion out there that there are benefits to EU membership and it's a pretty terrible world not being in the EU. A Labour Party firmly behind EU membership not only distinguishes itself from the Conservatives, it says we are very different to the Conservatives, but they can use that position to point out all the fa failures of Brexit as they unfold. Remember, whoever is the next leader is now going to live through the period of Brexit. They're going to start after we've already, well, not really left the EU, but, but lost our membership. We'll still be in the EU because of the transition period. So they will get to see the transition period coming and probably going, unless Johnson keeps extending it for the next five years. They'll see what happens after it in terms of whatever happens. They will be able to point out every problem that people are having, having directly linked to Brexit. They'll be able to talk about all the benefits that we used to have as members of the EU that we don't anymore as people start to notice them. And finally, the new Labour leader has to challenge the Conservative government. Now, I'd like to think this would be a given, but I'm afraid the experience of the last few years means that we can't take it for granted, can we? Labour have to relentlessly shine a spotlight on the damage that the Conservative policies are doing to the lives of ordinary working people, the NHS, the economy in general. Boris Johnson doesn't like people having to call him out. He doesn't like people being cheeky, asking him awkward questions. We've seen that with his threats to the media. So do it robustly in Parliament and do it often. There are other things that will need to be tackled as well, including the independent body for dealing with racism within the party that Corbyn refused to go along with. But I think I've covered the main points, hopefully, that would correct the main campaigning issues. But of course, there may be others you think they should do as well. Put those in the comments below, please. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then also please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.